G'day guys, it's Paul from Paulie Man Astro, and today's video I was originally going to just have a play around with generalized hyperbolic stretch and show you how you can roughly approximate the Eric Cole balancing histogram technique from within PixInsight using the script. Uh, if you've never seen Eric's work, he's a multi-image of the day winner on Astrobin. I do recommend you check out his work. He's got some fantastic images. Uh, and what he does, that, that this balancing histogram technique, is he does it in Photoshop. Uh, he'll take his individual SHO layers into Photoshop as an RGB image uh, with, without stars, so he treats them like a tone map. And then he will balance the histograms using the levels tool so that the humps kind of all line up over the top of each other and then you'll create a new layer, use the lasso tool to, to select various areas of the nebula and then you'll balance the histograms in that area and, and he works his way out from the outside large scale of the nebula through to, to the kind of core of the nebula I suppose, the, the brighter regions and balances the histograms all the way through and what, what you find is instead of a over the top green SHO image or a blue gold image that many people will produce, the whole nebula has this huge colour contrast, they're, they're absolutely beautiful images and the idea of the video was I was going to show you how you could use this tool to kind of approximate that idea but then Mike, the, the guy in charge of creating the script for GHS uh, private messaged me and said do you want to be in on the, the beta test of GHS 2 and I'm like of course I do um, I didn't get as much chance to play with it as I'd like uh, due to various outside issues but I did get to play with it a little bit and the script I got a message last night the script is now live and one of the great things is, is it's got a repository now so you can add that repository to your um, PixInsight repositories list and whenever PixInsight updates or you check for updates it will automatically update GHS if there's been an update so that's a fantastic uh, bit of news um, the other big change to GHS 2 as you'll see is there's a, a near real-time preview which is fantastic that's a game changer and it also allows you to isolate out stretching of your luminance and your color separately uh, which is a, a huge change and you can also stretch the saturation um, so let's dive in and we'll have a look So you can see here a HOO image of the Tarantula Nebula, this is one of mine. I've used this data quite a few times because unfortunately 2021 was an absolute write-off, clouds, clouds, clouds and rain, and 2022 is even worse so far. We've got flooding and just the rain does not look like it's going to stop, for at least for the next few months. Uh, so I haven't got any new data, if I've got to use what I've got. So again, yep, this is the Tarantula Nebula and this is what we're going to have a play with. So it's still under script utilities and you can see I've got both here. I've already downloaded generalized hyperbolic stretch version 2. Unfortunately it doesn't tell you which is which but you'll know when you've chosen the right one. Uh, if I click on this one now this is version 2. Version 1 was essentially this small section in here across the whole screen but now version 2 has this preview window as well and you'll see that in action as, as we work on this image. So let's select my HOO image, and I'll quickly go through uh, my initial stretch. I've done this in previous videos. I'm just gonna do this roughly and quickly. Normally I'd spend a bit more time on my symmetry point here, getting it right where I want it. But as I pull this stretch factor now, when I let go and, and give the computer a chance to update, what you'll see is a live preview now. This is what the image is going to look like, which is fantastic. So that looks like a good start. And we're off and running. Now you'll see the, the preview's gone pretty much completely white. This is like most real-time previews. Remember, if you use a tool or a script, uh, once it's once you've actually updated the image, it's still got all those initial parameters I had, so it's kind of double stretching now, as you can see for the histogram here, it's pretty much gone to the, the white at this end. So I need to reset whenever I, I finished so I can have the tool back at its defaults. So this is what the image currently looks like after my initial stretch. I've gone through my R, G and B, which is really nice. So let's have a look at, at luminance. Uh, now, if I was working with narrowband, I'd normally have I'd create a separate luminance channel and work on that by itself. But this might be fantastic for one shot color, for instance. If you've just done your initial stretch and got it where you'd like, and maybe you want to do a little bit more work on just a luminance channel, you don't have to extract it now and, and work on it. From within generalized hyperbolic stretch, I can just click on this L channel here and do some stretching. So let's have a look. I might choose a a region on the right hand side here just for a bit of a change and that's 
basically because at the moment I can't see any nebulosity uh, in the background here. It's kind of there, but let, let's choose a point on the, the, the right here anyway as my symmetry point. I could leave it at zero and see what it does as well. Um, let's do a fairly, fairly moderate stretch uh, intensity. So it's kind of going to um, stretch mostly around where this blue line is, but it's still got a, a bit of room around to stretch everything out. And let's start pulling that up and again you'll see the the real-time preview here that it's just stretching the luminance and you can see as you stretch luminance obviously your uh, chrominance is going to start getting more faint so you need to boost the saturation uh, with that or we'll work on your color data to stretch it out as well so let's not make that quite as an extreme stretch and I might also reduce that stretch down using the highlight protection here as well not necessarily best practice but I'm just showing you roughly here that you could play around with the illuminance just like normal working with it with normal curves or a histogram stretch but you can do it without extracting the luminance and see what you're doing live as a preview here and now let's work on the saturation I won't boost the saturation much I might have actually leave the symmetry point at zero for that why not let's do a nice wide stretch and you'll find, like with uh, saturation mostly, you don't need to do a huge stretch here, otherwise you'll easily overdo it. I probably have overdone it there, but just so you can see it on the screen. So you can, it's pretty much a one-stop tool now. You could pretty much do your whole routine after your, your calibration and your uh, linear steps of background extraction and, and noise reduction from within this tool. And then, then any further noise reduction you wanted to do at the end and any tidying up you wanted to do at the end once you're finished with the tool. But pretty much everything can happen from within the tool now, which is really nice. So that was obviously a really rough, quick show of what the different pieces can do just so you can see now you can work on the luminance from within the tool you can work on the saturation from within the tool you can work on the color space from within the tool which is going to be fantastic i think as i say for one shot color so now let's have a bit of a play on my data here on ngc 6188 the dragons of arrow and see how the eric cole approach to balancing histograms can really make a difference to your image and how GHS with its live preview now and ability to, to work on the individual color channels, illuminance and saturation, of course, can help you out. So you can see at the moment, this is a straight SHO image and it's quite green, as is always the case, because almost always the case anyway, because your hydrogen data tends to dominate and your sulfur data is probably quite weak. Um, so that's exactly what's happening here. So let's use the, the Eric Cole approach to solve this problem. But I guess the advantage somewhat here is that I'm going to be able to, to get real-time feedback, see how my histograms are, are changing, and I can work from the linear stage right through. So let's open up that script. And then I'm going to select my image, which is image 26, apparently. So here will be my real-time preview. Now, apologies, my computer seems to be running a bit slow, so this might be a bit sluggish, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. So what I'm going to do before I do my initial stretch here, I'm going to do things a little bit different because I want to balance the histograms. So if I zoom in at the moment, if I zoom in quite a lot, I can see my compared to my red and blue channel, my green is already fairly wide as a histogram, which is what I expect. Uh, there's a lot of data there, whereas the red and the blue have only really captured the brighter parts of the nebulosity. They're a bit weaker, so we need to stretch them out to try and pull out that fainter nebulosity if we can, give it a chance to shine. Uh, so let's do that. The blue looks like it's going to be a fair bit easier to work with, so let's grab a point on the left of the histogram. I want to, if I chose a point past this hump here, I'm just going to exaggerate that hump. So I don't really want to do that if I can help it. So let's grab to the left of that hump because I don't want to split my histogram any more than has already happened. So 0, 0, 1, 7, 4. And then I'm going to do a fairly wide stretch on this one, fairly minimal stretch intensity. So it's not very focused. And then I'm going to zoom out so I can see this histogram. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fairly extreme we oops choose my my uh, blue channel I'm going to stretch that out a fair bit so that the histogram has been nicely stretched out and then I'll pull it right back to uh, the idea is going to be that I'm going to align those histograms so I'll now I need to zoom back in so I can see my histograms and basically when we're working this close to the edge of the histogram, I really kind of need to use my actual numerical values here rather than 
try and use the slider. It's just not fine enough. Um, so that's getting close. Basically, I'm trying to align this hump with this hump here as much as possible to get them to better balance with each other. So that's looking better. We might be able to adjust that in the future, but at least it, it's a bit more stretched out now and the humps align a bit better. So I'm just going to wait for this to update and then reset. So there we, we can see our blue histogram has stretched out a little bit more. Now we'll do the same thing for the red. Might choose a point a bit further along for red. For my symmetry point, at least it looks somewhat symmetric, unlike the blue. So zero 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 zero, not zero zero zero. One eight five. Again, fairly wide stretch here. And then I'll zoom out so I could see what's happening with that. Whoops, again, I've got to choose red channel here that I want to be working with. So there we go, we're stretching that out. I don't want to see I've caused a, a, a bump here, a hump here, I don't want that. So let's stop about there. And then again, zoom right in so I can see my histogram down here and drag the red right back. And then refine using the actual numbers because it's just, as I said, not, not fine enough the slider at this point because we're pretty much linear. Maybe a touch further. There we go. So the bulk of the peaks are now lining up with each other. Okay, and the, the image is still, it's not quite linear anymore because I've done some stretching, but it's pretty much linear. So that's looking better than it was. We could probably do that again while it's still linear and keep trying to stretch out uh, these histograms. Maybe we'll do it with the red one more time, but we'll leave blue pretty much where it is, I think, for the moment. Just so, again, as I said, the video is not too long, but the idea, it's, it's a constant refining of, of things here. So I'm going to zoom out because I don't want to end up with a an exaggerated peak or a hump or anything like that in it. So that's starting to form there. I don't want that. So maybe there. Zoom back in so I can see my histograms and pull my red back. And then actually type in some numbers. Might change that to a three and see what that does. There we go. So that's lined with the green and fairly well aligned with the blue. So you can play around and refine as much as you'd like in, in this section to try and get things stretched out a little bit more evenly because you can see the green still very much dominating at this end of the histogram, but that'll be enough, I think, for the, the moment to illustrate the point of what this is doing once we actually start stretching. So again, let's pop this back here because I don't want to accentuate that, that blue hump too much and I, I don't want to accentuate this green hump if I can help it. So maybe even a bit further back like that. So let's put that symmetry point in, 0, 0, 1, 6, 7. This time, this is like our traditional normal stretch. So I do want this to be quite, um, have quite a high intensity here. And I can zoom back out and now let's complete our stretch and we'll see the live histogram update once I let go here. There we go. So you can see it looks slightly less monochrome green than it did before with this initial stretch here. All right, so let's reset this and let's keep refining our histogram stretches now. Okay, so again, I can see my red and my blue need more stretching at the at the far end. They need to be stretched out. So let's let's work on that now. So I'm going to have an attempt at stretching blue here. Um, I've put the the symmetry point just to the right of the histogram here. Whoops, need to select blue. And let's see if I can stretch that histogram out a bit, kind of like what we've got with our green histogram, and then drag it back to balance those histograms. So that's probably too extreme for the stretch. Maybe a 1.5. Okay, let's see how that looks. So if I look at my green and my blue histograms now, there's my green. There's my blue. I could probably push blue up a bit so that it kind of lines up here a little bit. I won't push it much, just a touch. I'll keep a symmetry point at zero. Let's just move it point one maybe, just to better align this end of the histogram. Give it that little bit of a fighting chance, the poor old blue. So there's green, there's blue. They're looking a, a bit more even now. 
So now we just need to play around with the red. Again, I'll push the red a bit beyond the symmetry point, and then we'll stretch it out. We'll select red first. We'll stretch it out. So I've caused a crazy hump there. We don't want that. There we go. And then drag that back. So the histograms align. Whoops, too far. Like so. And you can already see the red started to pop a little bit. We've got a bit more uh, color in, in these regions here, which is really quite nice. So these histograms now are looking more balanced. And like I said, you could refine as much as you wanted to. Now, the, the true Eric Cole approach is to actually remove the stars so you won't get some crazy, um, you won't blow out the stars and you won't get crazy magentas and things like that. I just left them in for this. It's just a, an illustration of what you can do. But normally you'd be working on a tone map, obviously. Uh, now you could play around with your luminance and your saturation um, as much as you wanted to, uh, to, to really boost this image. As I said, you could have a separate uh, luminance image made up of the H-alpha and a blend of, of some of the other um, channels to really boost that and, and do some work on sharpening and so on. So that gave you a quick overview of how the Eric Cole approach can be applied to these images. It went from a, a crazy blue-green image to something that has a lot more color in it now um, across the full RGB gamut. Not bad for uh, data where the S2 data was somewhat lacking compared to the other two channels. I think that it's a one-stop shop now, a generalized hyperbolic stretch. It's fantastic. So if you haven't got version 2, grab it. The real-time preview is enough to justify grabbing it. Uh, the repository just doubles that gold sticker, uh, but the one-stop shop is, is amazing. I'm really excited by this tool. I love this tool, um, and I hope you're excited by it as well. Thanks for watching.